<laughs> Sorry, Porky, I didn't mean it. Skipper, you're getting to be a right big help to me. Ellie May, get these varmints out of here. <laughs> oh, Granny, they ain't varmints. They's my critters. I don't care if they's your cousins. Get them out of my kitchen before I make stew out of them. <laughs> Jed, Ellie Mae's critters are crowding me out of my own kitchen. How soon are you going to have my root cellar ready? Well, it won't be long now, Granny. Leif Crick got the most of it done. Jethro and me is going in there, square off the corner, and put in the framing. Well, let's hurry it up. I need a place where I can get off to myself. Well, Jethro's down in the hole now. Let's go see how he's doing. Awful dark down there. How's it going, Jethro? Hey, Uncle Jed! Hey, Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed, pull me up! Okay, boy. It'll be a dandy deep one, Granny. Ain't nothing gonna bother you down there. That suits me just fine. Of course, if a cyclone comes up, I'll let the rest of you join me in my cellar. Thank you. Just till it blows over. Then I want everybody out. <laughs> Uncle Jed, Granny! What you got smeared all over you? This here's oil. What? You done hit oil again. Well, I swung my pick. Pretty soon it was bubbling up and spurting all over the place. Well, there goes my root cellar. Uh, let's look on the bright side, Granny. I think we're in time to plug it up. <laughs> yes, Ru. Grab a shovel. Help me fill in this hole. Don't you want the oil? I need more oil like Custer needed more engines. <laughs> Hurry up. Let's go. Morning. Can you think of any reason why Jed Clampett would be digging a large hole in his backyard? No. Not unless he's going to take his money out of your bank and bury it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We do not joke about such things. Now find out why the Clampets are digging. Yes, sir. That's it. Big smile. Hold it. What's going on in my office? Yes, that. Well, it seems some girl from the secretarial pool has been chosen to represent the bank in the contest for Queen of Beverly Hills. Oh. Gee, it seems to me that intellectual measurement should determine who will represent this bank. You've got something there. Of course, she's got something there, too. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Drysdale. Did we have a picture of you with your bank's representative? Well, seems only fitting and proper. Fine, we're right over here in front of the desk. Pardon me. Uh, Chief, I thought you agreed with me that intellect was more important than... Cheesecake. <laughs> oh, yes, we, we do want an intellectual look. You are a secretary, right? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's better. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> and now let's have a nice big smile. Hold it. Thank you, Mr. Drysdale. I'm sure your representative will win the race for Queen. Oh, I hope so. After all, that's what I'm paying you for. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Drysdale. Good morning. Where is my husband's secretary? She's in his office with him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you really take shorthand? Well, uh, not very fast. It's not too important. <laughs> she is a secretary. Word of honor, this is, uh... What is your name? Candy Davis. Candy, yes. Well, this is, um... <laughs> My name is Madrid. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale. See that your employees dress properly. Yeah, see that our employees dress properly. Dress properly, employees. <laughs> well, now, Milburn, there is another explanation that I'd like. Yes, dear. Those hillbilly friends of yours are defacing that beautiful estate next to us. They're burrowing about like so many gophers. <laughs> I want to know why. Well, I did ask somebody to look into that. 
You. Chief, I forgot. She forgot. I'll look into it immediately. Really, Milbert, I've taken all I can from those clamp bits. Well, I haven't. That oil money still keeps rolling in. Money isn't that important. Who steals my purse steals trash. Shake hands with a dedicated trash collector. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but Miss Commerce Bank forgot her banner. What is this beauty contest nonsense? Well, it's in connection with Beverly Hills' 50th birthday celebration, the semi-centennial. You see, Margaret, it is important. The spotlight of the world will be on our fair city. And what will the spotlight show? Four unkempt hillbillies digging holes in the ground. <laughs> Who's going to look at them with a hundred girls like this parading around? I told you to wait in my office. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I hope you're not going to overlook the intellectual approach to this contest. The girl who wins will reign as queen of Beverly Hills, and she wins a trip around the world. <laughs> well, that's it. Winning this beauty contest could solve everything. Oh, Margaret, Jane couldn't win with a rented figure. Oh, but Ellie Mae Clampett could win. And naturally, her family would want to go around the world with her. Mm, I don't like the idea. Oh, please, Milburn, just during the semi-centennial. No, Margaret, I don't like it. Very well. Mother will arrive tomorrow for a six months visit. I like it. <laughs> Gonna have a root cellar 60 foot deep Where I can sit alone and rock and never hear a peep And if Ellie brings her big machine, I'll throw them out the door And have this go dig me down 60 feet more <laughs> I done struck oil again. It's a regular plague. <laughs> it's a black day, Jethro. Sure enough is for me. I need a root cellar in the worst way. I got some goat cheese that should have been put underground a year ago. If it gets any riper, it's going to run us out of the house. Granny, <laughs> look who's going to see us, Granny. Jethro, what have you been doing? Digging a hole in the ground. But every time Jethro, I start... Jethro, uh, we ain't talking about them holes, remember? Oh, I am. I was just trying to tell Miss Jane that every Go time... Go outside start... and wash up. Thank you. <laughs> Take the hole, Jethro. Get some. Don't talk, Jethro. Just keep talking. Don't talk. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, we shouldn't have secrets from one another. Now, let's discuss those holes you're digging. Well, uh, we better handle them, Mr. Dryas. He'll probably get you all stirred up. But what? Is it about your money? Tell me. You see, you're stirred up already. <laughs> Let me ask Mr. Clavitt's help with my problem. Uh, perhaps that will solve yours. Could we step outside? Yeah, but uh, not too fur outside. Very well, Mr. <laughs> Chief. Why don't you stay and visit with Granny? Granny, let me tell you some of the advantages of the modern-day bank vault over, say, a hole in the ground. <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Mr. Clavitt? The city of Beverly Hills is about to choose a queen. You don't say. Yes. Number of beautiful girls have entered the race. How many you got running? Quite a few, but there's always room for one or two more. And another advantage is that our vault is nice and dry. In fact, air-conditioned. <laughs> things become moldy and damp when left underground too long. Now, I've known that to happen. But it would be a mite unhandy for me to have to go clean down to your bank every time I wanted something. No, but you won't have to. You just pick up the phone, tell me how much you want and when you want it, and it'll be here like that. Will? Yes, ma'am. Now, that'll be much handier than using your own backyard, won't it? Yeah. Especially after all the trouble we had trying to dig them holes out there. Now... Here are some of the other advantages. And in addition to reigning over the city of Beverly Hills as queen, the winner will also get a trip around the world. Well, doggy. Yes. There'll be parties and dances. She'll be the center of attention, besieged by handsome, eligible men. You know, something like this is exactly what Ellie Mae needs to turn her into a lady. You are right. What a wonderful idea. Has she got a chance of winning? Mr. Plappert. If Ellie Mae runs for queen, I can practically assure you that she will win the race. I hope I can get her to run. Jed, Mr. Drysdale has done talked me into not digging any more holes. I'm for keeping everything in the vault down to his bank. Whatever you say, Granny. Come on in and help me tow something. We'll be right back. 
You know what, Granny? The city of Beverly Hills is going to have a queen. No. And you know how they're going to pick the queen? How? They're going to have all the girls run a foot race. <laughs> I'll be switched. Congratulations, Chief. You did a great job. I was mildly magnificent. How did you do? Mission accomplished. Ellie Mae will enter the race for Queen, and the finals will be held beside the Clampett swimming pool. <laughs> By George, that calls for a raise. Chief, oh, it's, it's all in the line of duty. Oh, no, no, it isn't. I deserve a raise, and I'm going to have it. <laughs> Granny tells me you're going to keep all these vittles for her down in the vault in your bank. Granny, no, Jeff. If ever I need anything, he's going to fetch it out here himself. Well, yeah, that is surpassing kind. I wouldn't open that until you get it down to that air-conditioned vault. Now, Granny's got cheese in there. It'll walk down to the bank by itself and give it a chance. Look up, Chief. Half a victory is better than none. Wait till you hear who's going to run in the race for Queen of Beverly Hills. I heard. And I think Ellie Mae will win. Don't be too sure. Who could possibly beat her? Well, Granny's going to try. <laughs> what? Uh -huh. Oh, Granny, you haven't got a chance. We'll see about that. My legs is ever a bit as good as Ellie Mae's. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Pick up your basket and let's get back to the vault. <laughs> Where do they come off thinking I ain't got a chance to be queen? Now, cool down, Granny. I reckon they just never seen how fast you can run. <laughs> On your mark! Now, do your best to give me. Get set! <laughs> Who won, Jed? Well, when you pass me, appears like Ellie was out in front of you a little. That don't mean nothing. She's out in front of me, standing still. <laughs> Maybe you better sit down for a spell. Brady, you sure you want to race against all them young girls? You're darn tootin'. I'd do anything to be queen of Beverly Hills. How come you're so anxious? Cause, when I'm queen, folks will have to do what I tell them to. And I got a lot of changes in mind for this town. <laughs> Sorry I beat you, Granny. You only beat me because we was running on level city pavement. I'm a stump jumper and a head chopper. <laughs> Ted, you and Jethro wrestle me up something to jump over. I'll show this young'un how to run. Well, granny, you might could get hurt. Like I said, Granny, I don't care nothing about being queen. You don't have to race me. Now, you listen to me, both of you. If I'm going to sit on the throne of Beverly Hills, these legs is going to take me there. Now, you get ready to run, and don't hold back. <laughs> on your mark. Get set. How'd we do that time, Jed? I'm afraid the young and edge you again. You ready to sit down and rest now? No, I'm just commencing to get member down. <laughs> Hello? Don? Well, I don't care what it smells like. It stays in the vault until I say take it out. <laughs> You gotta slow down rest a spell. Where do you get off like that giving orders to the next queen of Beverly Hills? <laughs> no, queen, you've been running for two hours straight. And as soon as Ellie Mae gets her wind, I'm gonna race her to Pasadena and back. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Granny, I am to talk to you immediately about running for queen. You in the race, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm hardly with my best in a bathing suit. Bathing suit? Why would you wear one of them things? Well, all the contestants have to wear bathing suits. Not me. But it's one of the rules. Then I'm taking myself out of the race. I don't blame you, Granny. Why, if I was to show up in one of them skimpy bathing suits, it might start the men folks to fighting over me. <laughs> I hear tell that these city men are bold to begin with. One of them rascals might 
run up and grab me and hug me and kiss me and choke me off and marry me. And I just put myself back in the race. So, you see, Miss Davis, being a beauty queen isn't all fun. It's lots of hard work, too. Oh, I won't mind that. I'll just keep thinking about that wonderful trip around the world. Wonderful? Have you ever had those shots they give you? <laughs> it's a nightmare. Why, your arms will ache for weeks, and you'll break out in these large black and blue bumps, and sometimes break out in a rash. Well, other people have gone through it. I guess I can. Now, wait, you haven't heard the worst part of it. Mr. Drysdale, I I'm representing your bank. Don't you want me to win? Uh, well, of course I do, but I feel responsible. I feel duty-bound to show you both sides of the picture. You might want to drop out. Now, don't you worry about that. Nothing can discourage me. I'm going to win that contest for you. Thanks a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chief, mission accomplished. Ellie Mae will be the sole entry from the Clapper family. How did you do? No good. Cheer up. Ellie has a good chance of beating her. Oh, Miss Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale, can we be getting back to town? I have a date tonight with the head judge. Uh, the finalists are uh, the representative of the Commerce Bank, Miss Candy Davis, and our unsponsored contestant, Miss Ellie Mae Clapper. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Um, Milburn Drysdale, the president of the Commerce Bank, has an announcement to make. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. <clears throat> due, <clears throat> due to circumstances beyond her control, Miss Candy Davis has been forced to withdraw from the contest. Oh. However, ladies and gentlemen, she will receive a trip around the world at the expense of the bank. <laughs> and a substitute will appear in her place. Uh, our two uh, finalists will please come forward. Miss Clappett first. <laughs> and uh, now the new entry representing the Commerce Bank. <laughs> Commerce Bank feels that intellectual measurements are more important than physical ones. And we have every confidence that you will agree with us. Are you kidding? <laughs> Each contestant will now step to the microphone and tell us in her own words how she intends to represent the city of Beverly Hills as queen on her world tour. Miss Jane Hathaway. Ladies and gentlemen, if I am so fortunate as to win you may rest assured that I will carry the message of our cultural and intellectual achievements to our sister cities from... from Pone to Pone. <laughs> and now we will hear from the, uh, from the winner. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, uh, Miss Clapper. Well, first off, I'm gonna take my critters. Especially my skunk along with me. Because critters, especially skunks, don't get much of a chance to travel. <laughs> I'm gonna take my pa and granny and Jethro and our hound dog old Duke with me. <laughs> I'll be mighty proud to represent the city of Beverly Hills. But just betwixt you and me, I'd heap rather Miss Jane here would win. <laughs> One moment. Please. Hi, Margaret. Ellie really made a right good speech, didn't she? First rate. Done herself proud. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I have your attention, please? Quiet, please. After due deliberation, <laughs> our judges have come to a uh, unanimous decision. The young lady who will represent the city of Beverly Hills as queen is none other than our distinguished judge, Miss Karen Crandall. <laughs> Ooh, 
<laughs> I'm so grateful to Bob. I mean Mr. Cummings. I mean the head judge. <laughs> Can I go? Gee! Now, Granny, wait a minute. Hold on, Granny. She's done work that Harry ain't to do it. Get out of my kitchen, you dead blame farmers. This ain't no bars, too. No, don't run so hard. Get off, Skipper. I'll whoop the whole kitchen caboodle of you. Granny, I don't think whopping's gonna do no good. I've been studying this problem of heat, and I think I got it figured out. I'm listening. Well, the only thing that's going to get Ellie's mind off of critters is a nice-looking young fellow. I'm all for getting Ellie a fella. Maybe Mr. Drysdale can help. He's got some fine-looking young hands working down at his bank. Now you're talking. You get yourself a son-in-law that can keep his eyes on your money. I'll call Mr. Drysdale. Jed Clabbit is on his way down here to look over his prospective sons-in-law. Now, I want to look them over first. Where are they? He is waiting in my office. He. <laughs> One man you found? Only one, whose qualifications make him worthy of the hand of Ellie May Clappett. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly. Oh, bring him in. He'll be an old man before I get to meet him. <laughs> Mr. Fred Penrod of the accounting department. Mr. Milburn Drysdale. President of the Commerce Bank and your esteemed employer. My boy, I've been looking forward to shaking your hand. I have great things in mind for you. Why, just last week, I was saying to my board of directors, keep your eyes on that up-and-coming young man, Rod Penfred. <laughs> Fred Penrod. Exactly. <laughs> I've been watching you ever since you started to work here. Well, I, I just started this morning, sir. Exactly. <laughs> and already your work is so outstanding, I have you earmarked for promotion. Well... Well, to be very honest with you, sir, I haven't done any work yet. Exactly. <laughs> and it's that very honesty that has brought you to my attention. Now, I'd like you to come to my house tonight for dinner and bring your wife. Mr. Drysdale, mm -hmm. he isn't married. <laughs> Not married? Too bad. <laughs> well, there goes your vice presidency, my boy. <laughs> vice presidency? Oh, yes, but I can only trust a married man with that kind of responsibility. Are you... Are you by any chance engaged? Uh, no, sir. You have a girlfriend? No, sir. I, I just moved out here from Kansas City. Oh, what a golden opportunity you're losing. Hey, Miss Hathaway. <laughs> right you are, Chief. We've got to get this young man married. He does need a wife. Somewhere there must be the right girl for him. Somewhere indeed. <laughs> a girl that can take him from accounting to the vice presidency of this bank. Chief. I think I have the answer. Good girl. <laughs> Goodbye. Wait, where are you going? Back to Kansas City. They may have some crazy little women there, but no crazy accountants. Oh, come back. Let's talk this over. I, I, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I, I am not going to marry you. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. We have someone else in mind. I mean, I'm sure we can find someone. Excuse me, Mr. Drydale. Ah, oh, Mr. Clampett, come in. I want you to meet a fine young man, Mr. Pen Fredrod. Uh, Fred Penrod. Uh, well, Mr. Clampett here is our biggest depositor. Oh, congratulations, sir. Well, it's no credit to me. My pa was a big man, too. He was taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in addition to being our biggest depositor, Mr. Clampett is also our richest. And he has one of the most beautiful daughters. 
in all of Beverly Hills. <laughs> ah, yes, the fabulous Ellie Mae. Tell me, Mr. Clampett, is that ravishing daughter of yours married? <laughs> well, now, Mr. Gradual, I just called you on the telephone. I told you I was looking for somebody to court Ellie Mae. Is that Fred Penn? Rod Penn. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, that name of yours is quite a mouthful. You mind if I just call you Rod? Fred. <laughs> oh, I'm Jed. I want you to meet my daughter. Oh, I'm sure that'll be Jake, eh, Fred? Oh, Ellie. I'm Jed. Rod. Fred. <laughs> no, no, hold it, hold it, everybody. Let's start all over. <laughs> <laughs> Little Paw Paw Tree, you're gonna make me rich. <laughs> yes, sir. You're gonna help me dig up old Jed's money. He's got buried around here somewhere. Lady, quick! Yeah, I'm back again, Granny. You miss me? No, and I ain't gonna miss you now. <laughs> Ellie May, fetch my shotgun. Oh, no, Granny, is that any way to behave to an old friend that just drove all the way out here from Black Home to bring you that paw paw tree? That little paw paw tree for me? Yes, it is, Granny. Why don't you steal it? <laughs> <laughs> you cute little old boss of you. If I didn't have my loving wife, Morty, back to home, I'd come a-courting you. Why, you lazy, good-for-nothing, ornery, low-down, thieving pot-cat. <laughs> Dog, if you don't sweet talk me better than my Morty. Yes, yes. Honey, Miss Ellie, Granny. darling, you must have heard your sweet little old Granny wrong. She said to fetch a shovel, so old Leif go and plant that there paw paw tree he done brought here. Paw No wonder Granny's jumping for Joe. You fetch that shovel now, honey, and you take this thing away, huh? Ah, you good for nothing, old gummy jumper. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Granny? You sure do know how to make a man feel the hope. We're about to watch Paw Paw Tree planted, Granny. Anywhere handy to the house where it gets a lot of sun. Well, how about where we filled in your root cellar? No, no. You're bound to hit oil. We don't want that messy stuff squirting out of the ground. Where do you dig? Dig shallow. I hadn't figured on doing actual planting. Mr. Crick seemed right anxious to do that himself. No, no. If he digs, he's bound to strike oil. That man fetches nothing but bad luck with him. <laughs> All right, Granny, we'll skip and meal plan it. And hurry. The quicker that tree is in the ground, the quicker we'll be shed of that hairy vittle vulture. <gasps> Granny, you'll hurt his feelings. I'm talking about that hairy varmint sitting in the kitchen. The ugly one. <laughs> Let's go, Skip. <laughs> a sandwich, or do you want me to? <laughs> Did you eat all the ham they was? Only the one you give me. You got more. I got more room. You got more in you now than a smokehouse. Get out of here. Granny, I need my strength to dig a hole for that paw paw tree I brought you. Ellie May is done planting the tree. Now get out of here. Ellie May shouldn't do hard work like that. That's for me to do. Now you climb into that puddle jumper of yours and take your worthless carcass back to the mud waller that you come from, you big bullfrog. You keep sweet talking me like that, you're gonna make me homesick for Morty. Why, you little stinker? I don't have to ask you who you're yelling at. I seen Leif's car out front. Where's Ellie? Out back, planting the pawpaw tree that Leif brought us. I'll go tell her to get purdied up. There's a fella coming to court her. <laughs> Leif Crick brung us a pawpaw tree? Yep. He's giving it to us? Free? Well, I wouldn't exactly say free. It's already cost me a ham, a pound of butter, and a loaf of bread. And my usually sweet disposition. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie, honey. Where are you, darling? Over here, Mr. Craig. This here's a dandy spot, Skipper. Plenty of sun. Wait a minute, Ellie. Now, hold on. Digging in the ground ain't no job for a sweet, purdy millionaire's daughter. You let old Leif do that, huh? Hello there, son. You run along. But, but Granny wants me to do it. Oh, now, Ellie, darling, you wouldn't want me to break my word of honor to Morty, would you? I done give him my promise, crossed my heart, that I'd plant this here tree. You did? I took a bow on it, and it's only fair. She went all the way out in the woods, dug it up, toted it four miles back to the cabin. Well? Well, now, you wouldn't long help your Granny. Well, now, will you look at this? Isn't this a nice spot? It's already been dug up. We won't ruin no grass. Yeah, but Pa wouldn't want you to dig there. Why not, sweetheart? Something buried here? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir, and he wants it to stay buried. <laughs> yeah, out of there, Leif. Granny tells me you brung us a pawpaw tree. I did for a fact, did. All the way from back home, just because I knowed it would pleasure you. And, and sweet little Granny, too. Told him not to dig there because they was... Never mind, Ellie. Uh, now, uh, why don't you uh, run on in the house and get yourself one of them there, what you call a uh, bubble bear. Get all sweet and pretty smelling because a young city fella coming over to court you. He is? What's his name? His full name is uh, Fred Penrod Pen Penrod, but he answers to uh, Fred, uh, Rod, or uh, Jake. Troy's got a slew of names, ain't he? He's got three names he don't even use, just the initials, uh, CPA. <laughs> What's that, Paul? Yeah, I couldn't help picking up a word here and there. Now, surely you ain't fixing to let no city fella come a-court in Ellie Mae. Not when I got a big, strong, handsome, hard-working, honest, likable, intelligent, unmarried son back home. Is that the one they call Weasel? <laughs> he spends most of his time in jail? That's the boy. <laughs> He's out again now, Jed. Turn over a new leaf, straighten up his line. No offense, Leif, but I kind of think Ellie can do better. Let me send for him, Jed. You can see for yourself how he's changed, Dub has. He's a regular city fella now, fit right here in Beverly Hills. I wouldn't waste no bus fare bringing Dub out here if I was you. Well, I won't have to, Jed. I'll get Morty to put him in the shoes. He can walk out. <laughs> Just forget it, Leaf. Now, if you'll excuse me, Ellie's beau will be here directly. I want to see he gets greeted proper. Well, I'm telling you right now, he won't be the boy my Dub is. Well, thank you, Leaf. That cheers me up considerable. <laughs> Be the young fella coming to court, Ellie Mae. My twin sister. <laughs> twin sister? <laughs> Jethro, if you was a young city fella, wouldn't you just drop right to your knees and ask her to marry you? Yeah. Ellie Mae. You're just about the prettiest thing the Lord ever put together. When that city boy looks at you, his eyes are gonna bug right out of his head. You say that Ellie Mae is bigger than you? Well, no, I wouldn't exactly want to say bigger. Just fatter, though. We used to be just like as two peas in a pod. The Ellie Mae took to eat more than I do. Hey, they sure don't put much candy in these here fancy boxes, do they? There's three pounds in that one. Good thing you didn't give it to Ellie. You wouldn't even bother to open it for that little dab of sweet. You, you know, I, I just remembered something. I should take my motor scooter in for service. It's, it's overdue. Is that a little thing what you ride? Yes, sir. It's, it's very economical. You can't take my sister honeymooning on that. Why, she eats sandwiches bigger on this contraption. You're right. I'll, I'll come back when I can afford a, a truck. Something bigger. Little city boy. You running out on my sister? Oh, no, 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 no sir. Because if you are, you better never show your face around here again. I, I won't. I, I promise. And you pass that word around down there to the bank. Ain't gonna be no trifling with Ellie Mae Clampett. Next young fella comes up here, Corton's gonna marry her. Y yes, sir. All 300 pounds of her. <laughs> yes, sir. Now you get out of here. Yes, sir. It must be your bow. Come on, Ellie. And don't you come back, boy. You, you, you have my word. Howdy there, young fella. Here's my daughter, Ellie Mae. Hi, Freya. Hi. So, so long. <laughs> this girl is Ellie Mae? That's right. Boy, I've... I, I've heard of crash diets, but this is fantastic. Is this Ellie's bow? Scrawny little fella. Uh, I'd like you to meet Ellie's granny and her cousin Jethro. Folks, uh, this is Mr. CPA Fred Rod. No, uh, uh, Penrod. CPA stands for Certified Public Accountant. 
Oh, we couldn't remember all them names. <laughs> Just call me Fred. Pleased to meet you, Freddy. Uh, glad to meet you, Granny. Howdy, Fred. Hi. Is that there your scooter? Y yes, it is. Can I ride it? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It pushes hard, but sure do ride smooth. <laughs> Come on in, young fella. Hello. Hello. Is this Luke's general store over to Sibley? Is that you, Luke? Well, this is your old friend, Leif Crick. Now, 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 hold on now, Luke. Don't go hanging on. <laughs> I'm calling for Jed Clampett. Yeah. He wants you to send my boy, Dub, out to California right away. He is. Since when? Well, can't you get the sheriff to let him out? <laughs> now, you young folks, go right on in the parlor and start getting acquainted. Granny and me will see you later. Yes, sir, Pa. Oh, uh, Mr. Fred, uh, I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Skipper, sure do hope you like that nice young fellow that's come to court me. Now, uh, uh, Granny, I reckon you'll be wanting to get the middles ready. Not specially. Well, do it anyway. Jim, I don't. Now, I'd just like to say that my daughter Ellie ain't been courted much. She's what you might call uh, innocent, uh, sweet and innocent. I understand perfectly, Mr. Clampett. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, Fred, do you like to get hugged real hard? Boy, has your father lost touch with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I sure do like to get hugged real hard. I sure do. Sit down right there and close your eyes. Boy, I'm not going to miss those crazy little women back in Kansas City one bit. <laughs> this is a good way to get acquainted. Yeah. You know something, Ellie? You've got to start using a milder detergent. <laughs> I mean, for Jed. Yeah, you gotta do it for yourself, too. If my boy's dub married to Jed's girl Ellie, you're gonna get that money I owe you. And it's gonna save me a heap of digging, too. Now, now you tell the sheriff, Jed Clampett's gonna pay for everything. Sure. All, all you gotta do is get Dub out of jail, clean him up, put shoes on, and send him out of here to marry Ellie May. <laughs> Did you hear some noise on the line? I didn't hear you squeaking and climbing out. Hey, no, 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 He's Mr. Clampett's nearest and dearest friend. I know. I tried to hire him as a night watchman at the bank, but the poor fellow just couldn't fit it into his busy schedule. You and Don about that man. Fantastic. He never stops working. Another Jeb Clampett. That's what he is. Yes. Well, let's see how young Redfern's doing. Redfern. Rod Groom. Oh, uh, never mind. Let's see how he's doing. Oh, Mr. Crick, how nice to see you. Why, well, it's that pretty Miss Jane oh. and that... Young Mr. Drysdale, the handsome banker. <laughs> I like this man. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for a place to dig a hole to plant a little old pawpaw tree for my nearest and dearest friends, the Clampets. You're always working, this man. Fantastic. Can't you stop just for a while? Oh, no, no, ma'am. I must keep ahead of Granny. Working, that is. I couldn't let no woman outwork me. I'll be seeing you. What a man. Salt of the earth. Fabulous. Well, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale, come in, come in. <laughs> Thank you. Well, how did Ellie like my accountant, young Fernpot? Fred. Fernpot. I declare that boy's got me and Jane even you. I hope if he marries up with Ellie and me, he'll pick out three or four of his favorites and leave the rest go. Apparently, the young accountant has taught Ellie to play the piano. That's a duet. My George, that young Fernpot is talented. <laughs> Who's playing the piano duet? Uh, uh he is.
<laughs> Granny, them was the best company middle you ever cooked. Absolutely wonderful. What were those delicious little meatballs? I'll give you the receipt when you get married, Miss Jane. There's my owl burgers, deep fried in possum fat. Husband will never leave home with them on the table. I had a nice big smoked ham, too. But that lazy good-for-nothing Lay Frick ate the whole thing. Granny, I would hardly call Lay Frick lazy. He didn't stop digging long enough to come in and eat. Digging? Lay Frick. Where about? Somewhere out and back, I suppose. Uh, he's planting your pawpaw tree. Ain't that a kind of a deep hole for that little pawpaw tree? <laughs> I gotta give the roots plenty of room, Jed. Don't dig no deeper. It'll hit oil. Well, I done hit it four times already, Granny. But I pumped the holes good and tight. Jed, I might have me a root cellar after all. Depends on how good he plugged up the oil. That's a lot of pressure to hold back. I think he plugged it up too good. Look yonder. Oil! <laughs> it's oil. It's a regular 